The reason that California has descended into a third world criminal hellhole is because of Democrat soft on crime policies that defund the police and that view the criminals as the victim and not the tax paying citizen. Speaking of being a victim, we were literally robbed while we were filming this video. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Benny Johnson, a conservative guy, very popular, a lot of videos on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, everywhere. I think at one point he was with Turning Point. I'm not sure if he is anymore, but he's a great content creator. Met him a couple times. Good person. He was in Oakland, California at the In-N-Out Burger that I think is now closing because of all the crime and violence happening outside. He was there filming the video talking about how bad the crime is. And right in the middle of the video, some ne'er-do-wells, some criminals, some hoodlums break into his vehicle and try to take things out. Smash the windows right in broad daylight. People around, cameras filming, doesn't matter. They broke right into his vehicle as he was filming the video. Now, this is of no surprise you go to left coast california you go to oakland you go to los angeles you go to san francisco this kind of thing can and will happen to you why well as you were hearing in the very beginning soft on crime policies democrats people that feel sorry for the criminals not so much for the law-abiding citizens but the criminals they are the ones who are given preferential treatment and it's weird because you would think that People that actually live there, that actually voting for people, would vote for people that are going to help themselves rather than help the criminals. But I think what's happening in a place like California, before we get to the video, is there's a big gap between the rich and the poor. And if you are a rich person living in an ivory tower in the sky, then it's all good. If you're living in L.A., Calabasas, Malibu, somewhere like that, it's fine. But if you're on the ground floor in Los Angeles, you live in pure ghetto and you're suffering. And you might not know how bad you're suffering because you were born into it. Now, before I go any further, let's check out Benny's full video. And of course, I will link to everything in the box. Then we're going to see some video about this In-N-Out Burger because it's closing. Not because it's doing bad with business and it's, you know, nobody's going there. It's closing because there's so much crime and violence they cannot keep customers or employees safe. But without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. in and out Burger is a beloved fast food franchise. They are wildly popular and expanding everywhere except for in one location. Welcome to the only in and out Burger that has ever closed. This is a historic location. You can see the iconic building, but there's a fence around it. The signs have been ripped down and the windows are all boarded up. Why did this in and out Burger close? Well, because people were getting robbed in the drive through lane. One My question is, why did they put a fence around it? And I understand boarding up the windows, but a fence? So maybe they really, really wanted to protect what's inside. Because I'm sure that if they just left it abandoned, the next step would be for the criminals to break inside and strip it down. All the copper and everything, all of that would be gone in a matter of minutes. As soon as they serve their last hamburger, the criminals would be in there stripping it all the way down. In 24 hours, it'd be a husk. And it might just get burnt down at the end of the husking process. But I digress. A thousand different criminal incidents of people being robbed while trying to get a burger in the drive through lane here. In and out? Yeah, in and out got the So people are getting robbed in the drive through lane. Imagine that. Imagine you pulling up to your local fast food restaurant trying to get a burger, fries, drink, a parfait, um, uh, apple crisp pie or whatever. And then somebody is tapping on your window and putting this big 45 in your face talking about, hey, give it up. I know you have your card on you because you, you're about ready to pay. Go ahead and give me the card. And then. That'd be it. That's crazy. I've never in my life heard about things like that happening. But California, different place. Out of here. The reason that California has descended into a third world criminal hellhole is because of Democrat soft on crime policies that defund the police and that view the criminals as the victim and not the tax paying citizen. Speaking of being a victim, we were literally robbed while we were filming this video. It'll be happening at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Man, it's time to get the hell out of Oakland, California. Well, now, I'm going to just say one thing. Just for a little bit of, you know, I just got to be a little bit correct. And if I'm incorrect, y'all correct me. 
But when you're talking about a vehicle breaking, it's called an auto burglary, not a robbery. A robbery is when basically, long story short, somebody puts a gun in your face or they put their hands on you. They take something from you physically. Like if you have a phone in your hand and they say, hey, here's a gun. Give me the phone or they go into a bank. Hey, I have a gun. Give me the money. That's a robbery. But if you break into a house or you break into a home and you try to take some things, that's considered a burglary. Although there was somebody there when it happened, ALX, shout out to him. And he says, I was in the car when it happened. The rest of the team was probably about 20 feet away. A car pulled up. Someone jumped out, smashed the window and tried to take a bag, had to rip it from his hands and told him to F off. So that right there would be considered a robbery attempt because you try to take it from him. You smash the window. He's inside and you're taking it from him. And same thing with a home invasion. A home invasion is when the people are home. You break into the house. You got guns. People are inside. That's a home invasion. If nobody's home, that's considered a burglary or a burglary attempt. Now, let's get to the next video here about this In-N-Out Burger closing. They've served their last hamburger. They've tossed their last fry into their grease. They have greeted the last customer. They've rung up their last order already. As you saw, it's boarded up, fenced up. It's a wrap. This video is from when it was closing. Check it out. It sucks that it's closing down. The crime rate's going up. Mm -hmm. It's sad. The days of being able to order a double-double in Oakland are over. The town's only in-and-out location is closing its doors for good tonight. The chain's corporate office says near-constant car break-ins, property damage, and armed robberies along Oakland's Hagenberger Corridor created an unsafe environment for customers and employees. And so, for the first time in the company's 75-year history, In-N-Out is shutting down a location. Today, we heard from one former employee who told us this feels like another big loss for Oakland. It's a great place here. I mean, especially when I was here, the Warriors were still here, the Raiders were still here. Everybody would come here after those games. And uh, That's right. I forgot about that. So, the Warriors, Golden State Warriors, they were in Oakland, but now they're in San Francisco. And... I'm not sure how long they're going to stay there either, but they're not in Oakland anymore. And then you had the Raiders, the Oakland Raiders. They at one point were in Los Angeles and now they're in Las Vegas. So sports teams are leaving. Companies are leaving. People are leaving. It's a mess in Oakland. It really is. And now they're trying to rename their airport San Francisco Bay at the beginning of it. And they're being sued by San Fran to stop that from happening. And this in and out location is right by that airport. So what happens is people that might not know where they're going, right, may not know where they are, they leave the airport, go right to the in and out and they're a target. And that was part of the reason why it was such a big place where crime happened. And of course, you have the lack of law enforcement being able to do their job properly due to the soft on crime policies from Democratic politicians in the city and the state. Just sad that it's closing down, but... Got to move on, you know, that's what we can do. Well, in a statement, in and outs COO says, quote, we are grateful for the community which has supported us for over 18 years. And we recognize that this closure negatively impacts our associates and their families. This location remains a busy and profitable one for the company, but our top priority must be safety. And this may be in and outs first closure, but it is not the first business to abandon Oakland's Hagenberger Corridor. Denny's closed its location there back in February. And just recently, the Taco Bell restaurants announced that they would be no longer opening up their dining room. Close the whole city. I mean, at a certain point, you know, and I, I feel for you guys who may live in Oakland. You may be from this area. I feel for you guys. OK, shout out to a one. You might be watching. Shout out to you, man. I feel for you guys. But it's like, what what can you do? How can you turn it around? Can you vote differently and turn it around at this point? Or is the the town, as they call it, is it, is it too far gone? It just might be. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Uh, are you surprised that Benny Johnson and his vehicle got hit right there, broad daylight, while they're filming, people are around? Are you surprised that happened? I'm not because... It's Oakland. This kind of thing does happen. But whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. Um, how you feel about Oakland and the crime? Like, what can be done? Is it too far gone? Uh, you guys pretty much know where I'm at. This is California, unfortunately. The big city areas, Oakland, San Francisco, 
uh, Los Angeles to a certain extent, not necessarily San Diego, but really LA, San Fran, Oakland, Bay area, this kind of thing happens. And I think ultimately it, it's just the, 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 the gap between the rich and the poor. If you have a bunch of money and you're able to live Palo Alto somewhere in a nice area or Calabasas, Malibu, Venice beach, not Venice beach. If you're able to live in a nice area, basically of these big cities, then you're good. You living in a regular area, middle class, which doesn't even exist, or you're poor, then you're living in gangland and you are in a war zone. That's just it. And I think Benny Johnson was able to get a taste of what the war zone is really like. Whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.